Hey fam, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McLeod Chapman. So for those who do not know the synopsis for this book, Richard doesn't have a past. For him, there is only the present. A new marriage to Tamara, a first chance at fatherhood to her son Elijah, and a quiet but pleasant life as an art teacher at Elijah's elementary school in Danvers, Virginia. Then the body of a rabbit, ritualistically murdered, appears on the school grounds with a birthday card for Richard tucked beneath it. Richard doesn't have a birthday, but Sean does. Sean is a five-year-old boy who has just moved to Greenfield, Virginia with his mother. Like many mothers of the 1980s, she's worried about bills, childcare, putting food on the table, and an encroaching threat to American life that can take the face of anyone, a politician, a friendly neighbor, or even a teacher. When Sean's school sends a letter to parents revealing that Sean's favorite teacher is under investigation, a white lie from Sean lights a fire that engulfs the entire nation, and Sean and his mother are left holding the match. Now, 30 years later, someone is here to remind Richard that they remember what Sean did. And though Sean doesn't exist anymore, someone needs to pay the price for his lies. Okay, so. I enjoyed like the foreshadowing and the flow of the timeline and stuff. Like Clay made me feel like a kid again. I was born in 78. So like all these little things that he makes references to in the story, I totally fucking remember that shit. Some of that shit I didn't remember until he mentioned it. I was like, oh my God, that's right. We did, we were supposed to do that like little thing when he got Cabbage Patch dolls. Like I would take care of it and all that shit. Like I felt like a kid again, but then I also still felt like an adult. You know? And okay, so I'm one of those people where I've started having uh, this thing happen when I'm reading a book or I'm watching a movie where I can predict things. And sometimes I think it's just, you know, I've been given all the clues and I, I think it can at times be on purpose. Like maybe the writer isn't so concerned, like that's part of the fun. It's not so much the destination as the journey. Um, and sometimes I think it's just a matter of like, you know, stories, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to brag. You know, you understand the ebb and flow and everything and you pick up what people are putting down. <laughs> the foreshadowing and stuff. So I don't think like, I'm not docking any points from the story for that. Um, I think that there are times when it's completely intentional and it doesn't, for me, it didn't take away from the story whatsoever. I really enjoyed this story. So the only, the only thing like, I wouldn't even call it criticism. There was one point where I had difficulty. I was like, wait, you know, it was just like, a shift and I was like wait what where are we going what huh what what there was no like chapter break or anything I was like what's happening oh okay you know like it just took me a second but otherwise like you just glide right on through man it just you just glide and it's just this glide and this was a f <laughs> and I'm gonna say this was a fun journey because it's fucked up but like <laughs> it was it was a good flow like I enjoyed it I like burned right through it I devoured it um, I did not like Tamarin, the wife. I don't like her. I'm never going to blame anyone for wanting to protect their child, but I don't like her. Like, what the fuck? The rabbit. <laughs> the way it's described. I did, I, I, I thought it was a freaking person, dude. I totally thought that it was a person. And I was like, oh, it was a bunny. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> had myself a little moment there. Don't, after reading a book like The Demonologist, where I just could build my thesis on that apparently, this one, I didn't really have that many notes to make. I was just too busy reading and then, like I said, enjoying the flow and all that groovy shit. Like I don't have anything bad to say about this story. Even, you know, even though it can be predictory for some of us, I don't think it's necessarily bad. Like I was in high school when the West Memphis Three happened, right? So like a lot of this shit, I was just like, oh, <laughs> how many of us like looked at ourselves and on our friends and were like, what the fuckity fuck? This story, even with all, even though I could be like, okay, I think, 
I think Clay is trying to say this. I think, I think that's what's going on there. Then there were still enough things going on where I was like, what's up with that though? <laughs> this is my note where I was like, you know, I keep thinking about X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z is just taking up real estate in my brain, Clay. I can't let it go. It's like, I can't, I can't let it go. And then I was like, you wouldn't let me let it go, would you? Nah. <laughs> I say well done, Clay. You know, you really put me right in that mode, right in those characters' lives and, and everything and the whole whirlwind of it all. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Highly recommend. I'm pretty sure I gave this five stars. Five out of five stars. If you haven't checked it out yet and you keep hearing about it, I agree that it's for a reason. All right. So yeah, next time I also read Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. I don't know if I'm like still dissecting my thoughts on that one. Like I can confirm still enjoying his writing from cover to cover. It's the perspective. This. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> so I'll probably save that one for like the June autistic readathon like wrap up videos because it's been a few days. Like I've had a migraine that I was stuck in bed with since. And I still like, I don't know, dude. I don't know what I think about that book. <laughs> I don't know what I think about it. I know what I think about this just fine, but I don't know what I think about that one, Steve. <laughs> there's, some, there's some feelings and some thoughts going on. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> All right, till next time, you guys take care. I wish you the best in life and people and our brains be kind. No more migraines and pain this week, all right? Fuck that. I'll see you later. Take care.